Hi, Mike Fisher here. We're in Frisco, hanging out. And thinking back on something that Jerry Jones said at the Mike McCarthy press conference, then something that McCarthy and Jerry both said, then something that Stephen said in the walk-off, and then something that was on Jerry's desk for a long, long time back at Valley Ranch. It really is true. For the longest time, sitting atop Jerry's desk back in the day was a wooden plaque with a slogan engraved on it. And the slogan went something like, as Jerry recalled the other day at the Mike McCarthy press conference, uh, if you're willing to give uh, others the credit, you'll conquer the world. Jerry uh, thinks it's, thinks it's uh, twisted and ironic, or maybe you think it's twisted and ironic that it would be Jerry Jones that would pretend to believe in that. But in fact... He continues to be kind of hurt by the idea that that he uh, does everything unilaterally, that this is a one-man everything. We're not talking about the Ring of Honor. That is, uh, in theory, a one-man everything, and that's a story for another day. But he mentioned that plaque uh, at McCarthy's introductory press conference, and he did note that he was bothered by the perception. And maybe that's one of the reasons that uh, there is work afoot to change that perception as it relates to McCarthy building his coaching staff. But Jerry's quote that day, somehow, and he was almost pleading with us to try to understand, this thing, his 20, his 30 years here, has turned into something perceived, a perception about him that he doesn't like. Because running the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry said, is a we deal. And it's true. Uh, Jerry, Jimmy didn't do it all alone. And Jerry couldn't do it all alone. And Jerry couldn't have success all alone. And frankly, Jerry couldn't have failure all alone. Either if, if you really follow this team, and I'm not talking about being casual, I'm talking about being involved in the day-to-day observation of the day-to-day operations of what's done around here, you understand that we is a part of it, although Jerry dominates the news cycle part of it, no question about that. Quote from McCarthy, the best statement that was said over and over in the interview, that weekend interview that spanned two days, is that we're going to make we decisions. Now here's the question. Do all the parties understand what we means here? And all the departments understand it? Uh, I've written before that Jerry Jones felt burned by the way that Jimmy Johnson orchestrated his departure here. Uh, That, 25 years ago, impacted decisions that Jerry made. He, He added head coaches who he felt would be loyal because he had just got burned. And, and, and that's understandable, I think. Uh, you know, human to human, that's understandable. And, and it's why to this day, Jerry so embraces the idea of loyalty. But he is still the decider, and he always has been. He also prides himself on being a good listener and a collector, collector of information. I think today that the Cowboys have a fairly sensible organizational chart. Jerry's on the top, Stephen below him, acting in what a traditionalist might call a day-to-day GM style. I think that's fair. And then personnel boss, Will McClay is here. And then the head coach, Jason Garrett, is here. So Jerry and Steven, coach and Will. Garrett had that kind of responsibility. He was there in the pyramid. And McCarthy's going to have that kind of responsibility and be there in the period, in the pyramid as well. Now, does... Is there allowance for a crossing of responsibilities? Is there conflict when that happens? Is is that meddling when it happens? I think there's three categories that will tell the tale. Category number one is football ops. That's what we'll call it for lack of a better word. It's been made clear that McCarthy is in charge of hiring his own coaching staff. Been made really clear. Been made clear to Mark Colombo. Been made clear to Sanjay Lal. And been made clear to Jerry and Steven, who would have preferred that those guys had been retained. But McCarthy made the decision. What about choosing the roster? That's always going to be done by consensus. It always has been. Jason Garrett, that was the word he used a lot. And he wasn't lying. And he wasn't uh, uh, getting rid of criticism, deflecting criticism by saying it was consensus. It was true. Back in Green Bay, McCarthy would occasionally express frustration that he wasn't often enough allowed to quote, pick the groceries. And if you're a football guy, you remember that that's Bill Parcell's uh, famous remark that, hey, if I'm going to coach the, if I'm going to cook the meal, why don't I get to pick the groceries? And 
That's what McCarthy wanted. Every coach wants that to some degree, I think. I don't know that, that Dave Campo particularly wanted that. Uh, I don't know that Barry Switzer particularly wanted that. But by and large, um, a, a coach wants to be one of the chefs in the kitchen and help pick the groceries. So playbook and game planning, that'll be the coaching staff. And involvement in the groceries, yes. The only wild card here is what we do with analytics because the Cowboys think they have their department, and they do, and McCarthy has his ideas, well uh, demonstrated on NFL Network and elsewhere, and Jerry has his stated view that, oh, in the oil and gas business, I just go with my gut. We're going to find out that that's not true. That that's, that we, he, Jerry just said that to back up something that Garrett had said on the radio. Not true. So there's some gray area there, but figuring it out it means good problems to have. So item number one is football ops, and it does appear as though the coach, McCarthy, is in charge of that. Item number two, personnel and cap management. McCarthy is not a personnel director. He's not a scout. He's not a cap manager. And, and that is a different department. Um, I think in recent years, even with Will McClay running the show in personnel as the unifier, uh, he had big ears when it came to what the coaching staff wanted. And the next thing you know, frankly, uh, Rod Marinelli, who apparently now is moving on to the Raiders, God love him, love Marinelli. But Marinelli's influence got Randy Gregory here and got Taco Charlton here and got Tristan Hill here. And maybe maybe Will McClay shouldn't have listened quite so much to the coaching staff. McClay needs to run the draft with recommendations from the coaching staff, but McClay runs the draft. Um, much like Jerry and Steven make, are making recommendations to McCarthy about the coaching staff, but McCarthy picks the staff, and McClay needs to run the draft. And you can forget about your Jerry almost drafted Johnny Manziel stories. Save that for the casual fan for uh, bedtime fantasies. Uh, it's the same thing with free agency here. They, they have a policy, they have, and it works. Sign our own guys. That's what they believe in. And, and that's going to be uh, Will McClay's department who continues to do fine work, hopefully, in digging up productive bargains. The McClay proof, I think, will agree, is in the pudding. Uh, the Joneses certainly believe so. They think they've got a title-contending roster. And McCarthy said as much. He's, he, his quote, the job that's been done to this point with personnel has been very impressive. That was a big attraction to me to this job. Cap management, that's a department that is overseen by Stephen. Uh, and then the actual people with the sharp pencils, they don't really want to be, they, they don't want their names in the paper. Uh, they prefer I not even mention them here, so I won't. I'll just tell you, Cap Hell, you don't really hear that stupid story anymore. It might have been true a decade ago. It ain't true anymore. An example of how it works in practice. At some point, it was McCarthy's job to endorse or not Dak Prescott. He gave him a thumbs up during the interview process. Now McCarthy's job is to coach him up. Continue using Dak as the example. Meanwhile, it's the job of Stephen and his associates to figure out how to pay Dak in a way that fits in the puzzle. And then third, it's the job of McClay and staff to find more Daks. That's the definition of each group's job. The we's here are pretty simple. Three departments, and they all dovetail under the Jones family. And finally, category number three, public perception. And yes, this is a thing. It's a thing because it's the Dallas Cowboys. And not just because Jerry is so public or seems to feel misunderstood. It's a thing in every NFL city, more here than elsewhere, but public perception and branding and marketing and public relations and sales, that's all part of it. Privately, back in Green Bay, McCarthy was bothered by having to be the front man. Ted Thompson would make decisions, sometimes unpopular ones or bad ones or ones that McCarthy didn't support. And because Ted Thompson was a private person, McCarthy would have to go hold the press conference to announce a move that he didn't endorse. Uh, he, he was pushed in front to have to be the face. He didn't want to be the face of that. Well, good news for Coach Mike. If you don't want to be the front face of the front office in Dallas, there's a guy right down the hall that's happy to do it for you. Jerry Jones will be the face. At the same time, McCarthy, quote, I'm excited as a head coach to have more input than I've had in the past. Input, but that's behind the curtain. He doesn't need input out in front of the curtain. He doesn't care if he where he sits at the press conference or if he sits there at all. And the Cowboys operate a little differently than other clubs. I think we recognize that. Jerry Jones, relative to most owners, is more hands-on. 
in terms of football ops, the salary cap, and personnel procurement. All those things are true. But Jones's truly unique role here has to do with serving gleefully as that aforementioned front man. Jerry does not, for instance, unilaterally decide the Cowboys or conduct a kicking competition. He, that wasn't his decision. It was Jerry's decision to go on the radio and talk about it. That's the carnival barker part of Jerry Jones's job. He announces the competition on radio. He doesn't stand out there and orchestrate the competition. That's part of the business of the Cowboys. It's part of the branding of the Cowboys. And it's part of the fun. Most of us admit, even those of you who don't like Jerry Jones admit, this all is kind of fun. If frustrating because you haven't won your title in a quarter of a century. If the Cowboys as an organization can somehow prevent the lines from blurring, the business circus occupying its space with the carnival barker, who's the best in the world at it, not too often bleeding over into football ops, then the Joneses' we partnership with Mike McCarthy, so calm, so cool, so reasonable, really can work. But Jerry Jones is the owner with all the rights and the obligations that go with that. And with his, ain't got time for a bad time, credo driving him. Remember that. You think back and you put yourself in the Valley Ranch office like I used to be so often, sitting there with uh, the great Marilyn Love waiting to get into Jerry Jones' office. And I, I'm thinking back to that plaque that Jerry said was on his desk, and it was, about it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care about the credit. That plaque really was engraved right here on the office, on his desk. But I'm thinking about Jerry's patience here and about Jerry's we-ness here and about Jerry's willingness to sit back and... Let, let these other, let football ops do what it does and let personnel do what it does and let cap management do what it does. And I'm thinking about this. Yes, it's amazing how much you can accomplish if you don't care about credit. But there was another plaque sitting on Jerry's desk back in the day. I swear to you, right like next to each other. One was on the shelf and one was on the table. And the other plaque on Jerry Jones's desk is the two vultures on a cliff overlooking, I don't know, some buffalo in the field. And one looks at the other one and says, patience, my ass, I'm going to go kill something. Fish out.